Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to this uh, 2 p.m. Uh, February 17th hearing of the House Committee on Higher Education and Technology. Uh, to begin with, we have, we have some um, procedures that the Vice Chair uh, White will cover for us. <laughs> Short recess. Chair DeQuite, please cover the procedures for this hearing. Thank you, Chair. Uh, as we begin today's session, I'd like to thank all of you for joining us. I'd like to remind you of a two minute time limit. Uh, in any event that we have disruption through internet or a catastrophic event that occurs, uh, we will uh, get back to you later. Uh, we will not be responsible, I'm sorry. Uh, and we will not um, entertain the idea of any profanity Profanity will be grounds for removal. Uh, with that being said, uh, Chair, all you, thank you. Thank you very much, um, Representative DeQuint. Uh, first up, we have House Bill 539 <clears throat> relating to um, threat assessment teams organized by the uh, Hawaii State Fusion Center. And first up, we have Randall Tanaka, Department of Education. Aloha Chair Takeyama and Vice Chair DeQuint, members of the committee. We stand by our testimony, appreciate the, the joint support that we have from public safety. Uh, this is a critical matter and has been exacerbated a little bit with COVID, uh, but we certainly support the intent of the bill and appreciate your time. Aloha. Thank you. We have um, comments offered by Cheryl Kakazu Park, Office of Information Practices. Um, Patricia Kicklin, Hawaii State Fusion Center. Aloha, this is Patricia Kicklin from Hawaii State Fusion Center, and we'll stand on our written testimony. Mahalo. Thank you very much. And finally, we have um, statements of support from two individuals, David Nakao and Luella Costales. So unless there's anyone else waiting to testify, um, we will entertain questions from members. Members, any questions? Uh, seeing none, I do have a couple of questions for um, uh, Patricia Kicklin, uh, Fusion Center. And my um, reading of your testimony um, basically says that um, you're recommending that uh, criminal justice uh, histories only be provided to uh, members of the criminal justice uh, system or the representatives. And I assume, is this based on um, information or ruling you received from the Attorney General's office? Uh, closer. We have uh, criminal history information and restricted criminal justice information. The amendments our conversation with State of Hawaii Criminal Justice Data Center. Uh, to be clear, restricted criminal justice information is the information that we're talking about amending a criminal history that doesn't pertain to restricted CGI would not be affected. Mahalo. And so um, your amendment suggests that um, such information should be restricted to being received by members of the um, criminal justice system themselves. Uh, what if uh, the UH or DOE team does not have a member of law enforcement or criminal justice on it? 
Sure. For a criminal justice agency that can receive restricted CGI, doesn't necessarily have to be law enforcement. Um, one partner that comes to mind, for example, would be probation services. Now, um, the way the law is drafted, we wanted to be clear that agencies would not need to include members of law enforcement because we didn't want that to have to be a hurdle. Let's say we have a threat assessment team that elects not to include a member of a law enforcement agency or another criminal justice agency. One way um, the threat assessment team could still incorporate restricted criminal justice information would be to have an ad hoc member. That means that there might be somebody in law enforcement, somebody in probation service, or another criminal justice agency who could sit on the threat assessment team for a limited purpose and be able to help out with that portion of the case. Also, as I talked about earlier, um, there's restricted criminal justice information, and then there's unrestricted. So other criminal history information, the Hawaii State Fusion Center would still be able to help with under the applicable law. Mahalo. Now, um, the DOE and UH both have um, campus security officers. Would these qualify for status as uh, criminal justice system members? It depends on the island. It's my understanding that neighbor island DOE schools have actual um, sworn law enforcement officers, school resource officers. Given that they're sworn law enforcement, they could have access to restricted CGI. It's my understanding that Oahu DOE schools do not have sworn law enforcement. In that case, they would need um, assistance from a member of a criminal justice agency. As for the UH system, it's my understanding that their security is not sworn law enforcement. Okay, thank you very much for clearing that up. Um, uh -huh. Seeing no other questions, let's move on to the next bill. Um, House Bill 1105, dealing with the Board of Regents Candidate Advisory Council. And first up, we have, um, let's see, we have the Attorney General's Office offering comments. Um, we have a UH Student Caucus, uh, Mara Stevens Chu. Aloha and good afternoon, Chair Takayama and Vice Chair DeCoit and members of the House Committee on Higher Education and Technology. Thank you so much for the opportunity to testify today in support of House Bill 1105. My name is Mara Stevens Chu and I am a graduate student at the University of Hawaii at Manoa and I am a delegate for the University of Hawaii Student Caucus which is the Association for Campus Governments across the University of, of Hawaii system, representing over 50,000 students. Student Caucus stands in official strong support of House Bill 1105. We are very uh, excited about the opportunity to engage in a more equitable process for appointing members of the Candidate Advisory Council for the Board of Regents. Uh, please refer to my written testimony for further details on why Student Caucus supports this bill. Thank you again for the opportunity to testify today. Mahalo. Thank you, Mar. Uh, let's see. We also have statements of support from um, New H. Manoa Student Caucus, Donovan Albano, Office of Hawaiian Affairs, um, comments from the Office of the Board of Regents, and uh, let's see, Alex Miller, Academic Labor United. Aloha, Chair Takayama, Vice Chair DeCoit, and members of the committee. Um, thank you for the opportunity to testify today. Uh, my name is Alex Miller. I'm the chair of Academic Labor United, which is the, um, the unrecognized graduate union for um, graduate assistance at the University of Hawaii. Um, and Alu stands in support of this bill 1105 um, to amend appointing authorities of the Candidate Advisory Council of the Board of Regents of the University of Hawaii and to include further guidance to Candidate Advisory Council in the selection of BOR candidates for the recommendation to the governor. Um, just like to elaborate that currently as the system stands for those watching the live stream that um, the governor's office holds almost entire, entirely the power to appoint members to the Board of Regents because his, his appointees to the Candidate Advisory Council then recommend candidates back to him 
who is that who then appoints them. And this bill will um, devolve that power to students and workers at the university, as well as the Office of Hawaiian Affairs and other public stakeholders. Um, Hawaii Revised Statutes 304A-104 instruct the State Senate to consider whether the board reflects the diversity of the student population in various counties of the state and a broad representation of higher education related st stakeholders when determining whether to confirm the governor's appointees to the Board of Regents. And Alu believes that the spirit of this statute should be carried by this bill into the entire selection process for the Board of Regents because it reflects an understanding that the University of Hawaii exists to serve all the people of Hawaii and the people who live, work, and learn at the university's 10 campuses, both now and in the future. Um, we do not believe that the current selection process for the Board of Regents reflects this, and that is why there is always so much conflict between the Board of Regents and faculty and students at the University of Hawaii. And this bill is an attempt to have more representation from workers and students, as well as the community in the Board of Regents selection process and the Board of Regents itself. Um, we stand on the submitted written testimony. Um, thank you for your time. Mahalo. Uh, let's see, we have a um, statement of support from Michael Galoyu Jr., LGBT Caucus of the Democratic Party, and statements of support from four other individuals, five other, other individuals. So at this point, um, members, any questions for those testifying? Seeing none, thank you very much. We'll move on to the next bill, which is... Um, House Bill 125, dealing with the uh, Uniform Employee and Student Privacy Act. And first up, uh, let's see, we have a statement of support from William Hoshijo, Hawaii Civil Rights Commission. Um, Brooke Connor, Department of Education. Aloha, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. This is Brooke Connor, the CIO for the Hawaii State Department of Education, standing in support of this measure and available for questions. Thank you very much, Brooke. Uh, Peter Hamasaki, Commission to Promote Uniform Legislation. Uh, good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, Peter Hamasaki, on behalf of the Commission to Promote Uniform Legislation. We're uh, in support of House Bill 125, which would enact the uh, Uniform Employee and Student Online Personal Privacy Act, and we'd be happy to answer any questions if there are any. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's all the testifiers we have. Uh, members, any questions? Seeing none, let's move on to um, House Bill 516, uh, dealing with uh, the requirement to donate use, usable con computers that are uh, purchased with state funds. And first up, we have uh, Brooke Connor, Department of Education. Aloha again, Chair, Vice Chair, members. Uh, once again, Brooke Connor from the Department of Education standing in support and available for questions. Thank you again for the opportunity to testify. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have um, DAG's controller, controller. Uh, it's pronounced controller, even though it's pronounced comptroller. I always tell people. But anyway, um, Kurt Uruguro or Audrey Hidano. Good afternoon, Chair Takayama and uh, Vice Chair DeCourt and committee members. I'm Audrey Dano, the Deputy Comptroller for Deputy Comptroller, Controller. Representative Comptroller. Uh, for the Department of uh, County and General Services. We stand on our written testimony uh, in, and support the intent, but we have comments. Thank you, Audrey. Um, Curtis Kropar, Hawaiian Hope Organization. Good afternoon, Chair, uh, and committee members for the uh, Committee on High... Uh, Higher education. Um, my name is Curtis Kropar. I am the executive director for the nonprofit Hawaiian Hope. Uh, to our knowledge, we are the single largest refurbisher of computers in the state of Hawaii. Uh, we strongly support this measure, uh, this bill, and hope that it passes. Um, we'd like to add some additional comments. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, uh, was able to read DAG's um, comments regarding their concerns about unintended liability issues. Uh, we as an organization have been doing and collecting computers from the state actually for about 14 years now. And we have never once considered any type of uh, um, 
<clears throat> actions against the state for any equipment that doesn't work. We understand, you know, we, we, we're getting it as, as is, and we appreciate um, every piece of equipment we can get our hands on. Uh, available for any questions or comments. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kropar. Let's see, we have um, statements of support from um, Joe Hammond and Forrest Frizzell. So with that, uh, we're open to questions from members. Representative Ganadin. Hi, Mr. Kropar. Hey, Curtis. Yes. Hey, uh, more than a question, this is um, a note of appreciation. Thank you so much for the work that you've been doing, especially in Kalihi, in um, delivering computers to youth um, throughout the year. I know you donated hundreds, if not thousands of um, hours, as well as um, pieces of hardware back to the community. Um, that said, um, should this law pass, like, um, how will it benefit your organization and your ability to continue the service? Um, how would it benefit the organization? Yeah, you, you mentioned that it is going to increase um, your ability to receive um, more devices oh, significantly yes. in your testimony, but can you give it some numbers? Um, yeah, so um, under the current laws, there is no mandate to have the state or any state agencies, state funded agencies to provide equipment to the nonprofits. They are actually open for pure disposal, um, which happens quite often. Um, you know, the, the various departments, many of them are not aware of us or other refurbishers in the state. And um, a lot of times the equipment that could potentially be used ends up getting sent to e-waste processors. And so that ends up on pallets and gets shipped right out of state. You know, nobody in the, in the state touches it after that point. Um, our estimate, <clears throat> and it is a very conservative estimate, is that that results in over 40,000 devices a year that are sent out of state. Um, I have another photo from an event we just did on Saturday where we picked up over 1,000 laptops at a single event. Um, if we were not there to deliberately intercept that hardware, it would have ended up on a pallet shipped to California or someplace. Um, so yeah, this, this bill would take existing hardware that, that may or may not, you know, end up as a donation and would definitely uh, redirect it as donated equipment so that we could repurpose it, uh, fix it up and get it back out into the community. What would you put the value at for the hardware that you recently intercepted just this weekend? Oh, dear Lord. Uh, a thousand machines at cheaply a hundred bucks each. I mean, it, it, you know, hundred thousand dollars of hardware in one pickup. Um, and, you know, there's, um, we have previous testimony that we submitted um, earlier for the, the previous versions of the bill that um, we also participate in a, a, a Saturday um, Aloha Aina e-waste recycling where we pick up at various schools throughout the year. Um, and we get a lot of equipment that is dropped off there from the schools and government agencies and such. Um, in just a two year time span, um, the director of the project has calculated they received 133 tons of equipment that would have, um, that basically it went right to the e-waste to the e processors. Um, we were able to intercept a bunch of the laptops in the last couple of years, but the vast majority of the equipment, um, and a lot of it is completely usable equipment, um, it went right to the e-waste processors. Um, I would say in, in you know, I, I know I put 40,000 equipment or 40,000 machines in my testimony, um, but quite honestly, uh, the, the absolute minimum estimate that we have is it puts it closer to about 100,000 computers a year in the state um, that, are, that are being scrapped. So, and even if you value that at only 50 bucks or 100 bucks each, um, it's, it's potentially millions of dollars worth of equipment that is being thrown out that, that's already been bought and paid for that works. Um, we may need to put, you know, an extra hard drive into it or a new hard drive. We may put an extra stick of RAM into it, but, uh, you know, for a few bucks, we can get the thing up and working again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Members, any other questions? 
a representative de Coy. Thank you, uh, Mr. Kofar, for being here. Do you guys also collect from the neighbor islands, the hardware? Um, we are in the process of setting up, um, we are in the process of setting up collection from the neighbor islands. Um, where our real hope is that we're planning to put locations on the neighbor islands so not collect it and bring it here, but actually stand up some of our tech centers there on the neighbor islands, um, you know, and, and do the tech repair there and the training as we do here. Um, we've actually been looking at Molokai for, for a number of years. We have not been able to find the right location and the right landlord to cooperate. Um, likewise with the Big Island and other, you know, Maui, um, we are looking at establishing locations throughout the state where we can actually do the, do the repair work, refurbishing and tech training, you know, at each of those facilities. Um, that is our goal, not, not to bring it all back here, but actually do it on the islands and make sure that that island gets, you know, access to the equipment that's already there. That was, that was actually my next question, but um, thank you for answering that. And um, I, I would like to talk more with you offline on, on sure. that matter. So um, thank you, thank you for what you do, and appreciate everybody not dumping them all in the landfill. So thank yeah. You. Thank you, sir. Thank you, members. Any other questions? Seeing none, let's move. Let's move on to the final uh, bill on the agenda, which is House Bill 1280, transferring the Makai Research Pier from the University of Hawaii to the Hawaii Natural Energy Lab. Uh, let's see. First up, we have um, Gregory Barber from the. Natural Energy Lab. Aloha, good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, and members of the committee. Uh, I'm Greg Barry, Executive Director at NELHA, and uh, we stand and we'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Um, next, we have uh, Andrew Tellio, Department of Land and Natural Resources. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. I'm Andrew Tellio from the Department of Land and Natural Resources Land Division. Um, we stand on our written testimony and are here to answer any questions if there are any. Thank you. Uh, let's see, we also have Barry Chung from BLNR in support. Um, Calbert Young, UH. Uh, good afternoon, Chair, members. Uh, University of Hawaii has submitted testimony in support of this measure stand on the testimony. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see. Ann Chung, Makai Ocean Engineering. Aloha Chair. Can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Um, Aloha Chair and members of the committee. This is Ann Chung for Makai Ocean Engineering. Uh, we stand on our testimony in strong support. Um, but would like to retract the request for amendment. Okay, thank you. Um, that's all the testimony we have. Members, any questions? Seeing none, I do have a couple. Um, beginning with uh, Anne Chung, as I, just to clarify, your um, written testimony asks that we um, add in a, a grandfather clause in, um, and also provide current tenants with the first right to uh, renegotiate long-term leases. And you're saying that uh, you now wish, wish to withdraw that proposed amendment? Yes, um, correct. Uh, we had some discussions with Nelha and we are in agreement. Okay, thank you very much. A uh, question for Mr. Barber from Nelha. Um, Mr. Barber, to your understanding, how many tenants are there at Makai Research Pier? I, I count the UH, uh, Makai Engineering and Oceanic Institute, uh, Sea Life Park across the street. Um, are there any others? I, I think, uh... Okay. My understanding is, and probably Calvert could answer it better, but it's uh, Mackay Ocean Engineering, uh, UH has uh, one building and Sea Engineering is in another building. Um, Oceanic Institute and Sea Life Park are part of a lease that HPU has with uh, DLNR. It's nothing to do with the 
peer. So that's my understanding. Do you have any understanding of um, how long the current leases are for these tenants? Uh, my understanding is that they are month to month. Okay, month to month. Now, in your testimony, you said you oppose the bill as it's written. And in the previous committee, um, you offered um, comments that seem to be in support of the measure. The difference being that um, the previous committee added in a, a clause that grandfathered in uh, tenants of the Mackay Research Pier. Is that the reason for your um, current opposition? That's correct. If that section three is removed, um, then we would go back to our original testimony. Um, so if we remove the grandfather clause uh, in section three and the measure passes, what do you imagine will happen to the current tenants? Uh, you know, I have no idea uh, at this time. Um, uh, you know, basically what we're looking at and it's what we said in our previous testimony is essentially we're turning this from a research peer into a tool for economic development. Uh, the current tenants there uh, really are some of the leading uh, ocean technology companies in the state and would be uh, mentors for our efforts to turn it into a ocean technology accelerator incubator. Um, but, um, you know, there's, we would need space for uh, accelerator and an incubator. There is a current building where the uh, underwater research lab used to launch their submarines, uh, but that building uh, needs to be renovated into an office building uh, for additional space. And um, the reason we mention HPU and Oceanic Institute is that that's critical because it would provide space for the accelerator and incubator, it's across the street. So there's a lot of work to be done. I, I cannot uh, indicate you know, exactly how it will come together, but uh, we think it's an invaluable resource, you know, something that can't be replaced and should be saved uh, and repaired for, for the future to develop uh, the ocean technology sector. Thank you. So would it be fair to say, Mr. Barber, that assuming this bill passes without a grandfather clause in that you would um, make every effort to enter into uh, mutually agreeable negotiations with um, tenants who are there? Yes. Okay. Thank you. No more questions. Um, we'll discuss for this evening.
begin decision making, beginning with uh, House Bill 539 relating to uh, threat assessment programs from the Fusion Center. Um, my recommendation is to pass this bill out with uh, uh, several amendments. First of all, taking the uh, testimony and recommended amendments of the Fusion Center, which uh, limits um, certain criminal justice information to members of the criminal justice agency and their representatives. Also adding to the UH uh, threat assessment team, um, uh, someone with a background in emergency preparedness. Uh, we've consulted with the prior committee chair and has her um, agreement. So with that, members, any questions, comments, or concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair, would you take the vote? Members, Chair's recommendation is to pass HB 539 with amendments. Chair and Vice Chair vote aye. Representative Bolotti. Representative Gannigan. Representative Gates. Aye. Representative Hashimoto. Aye. Representative Capella. Aye. Representative Ono. Aye. Representative Quinlan. Aye. Representative Woodson. Aye. Representative Yamani. Aye. Representative Okimoto. Aye. Thank you, Chair. Your measure is adopted. Thank you. Uh, House Bill 1105 relating to the Board of Regents Candidate Advisory Council. Um, my recommendation is to pass this out with several amendments. First of all, changing the faculty appointee from UPA to that of the uh, All Campus Council of Faculty Senate Chairs. Secondly, um, keeping in language that allows um, emeritus, emeritus Regent as a non voting member. And also clarifying thirdly that the governor has 120 days after beginning the governor's term to appoint uh, someone to this council. Uh, fourth, deleting reference to the secretary of the board's uh, role on page six. And finally, uh, technical amendments and adding a defective. Date. Members, any questions, comments? If not, vice chair. Members, Chair's recommendation is to pass HB 1105 with amendments. Chair and Vice Chair vote aye, recognizing all members here. Any reservations? Okay. Reservations for Okimoto. Any nays? Mm -hmm. Chair, uh, your measure has been adopted. Okay, uh, thank you. Next bill, House Bill 125. Uh, Chair's recommendation is to pass this out with uh, te technical mm -hmm. non substantive amendments. Questions, comments, concerns, seeing none, Vice Chair. Members, Chair's recommendation is to pass HB 125 with amendments. Chair and Vice Chair vote aye, recognizing all members here. Any reservations? Any nays? Chair, your measure has been adopted. Thank you. Finally, finally House Bill 1280 relating to the Makai Lab, Research Lab. Um, Chair's recommendation is to move this out with the uh, deleting section three, which uh, grandfathers in existing tenants, also adding report language um, in the committee report, asking that uh, should the House Finance Committee consider this measure, that it consider um, that $5 million in geo bonds was suggested in the original bill. Also that, um, that if this committee, if this uh, measure passes, the committee hopes that um, uh, Nelha will enter into mutually agreeable uh, negotiations with uh, current tenants. With that, members, any questions, comments, concerns? Oh, I'm sorry, I apologize. Well, I, I skipped the bill, but um, we'll finish with Nelha, uh, HB 1280. Questions, comments, concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Members, Chair's recommendation is to pass HB 1280 with amendments. Chair and Vice Chair vote aye, recognizing all members here. Any reservations? Any nays? Chair, your measure has been adopted. Thank you. Uh, going back to House Bill 516. By the way, you guys can scream and yell if I miss <laughs> I don't mind. Um, House Bill 516 relating to uh, sustainable electronics. Um, Chair's, proposal, Chair's uh, recommendation is to pass this out as is. Well, questions, comments, concerns, Vice Chair? 
Member Chair's recommendation is to pass HB 516 as is Chair and Vice Chair vote aye. Recognizing all members here, any reservations? Any nays? Chairs, your measure has been adopted. Thank you. We're adjourned. And by the way, no hearing.